welcome to Riga in Latvia where we're doing some of our reporting from because of the restrictions that have been put in place on reporters in Russia limiting what they're allowed to say uh, so we are using our base here from this former Soviet state which has a border with Russia to reflect upon what's happening in Russia and also uh, the wider invasion of Ukraine and the latest we're hearing is about a change in leadership. Uh, we're hearing that General Alexander Dvornikov has taken control of the invading forces. Now one potential reason for that is that it makes sense to have him in charge because he was previously responsible for those areas in south and southeastern Ukraine that Russia has said are now the target of this military operation. So as the tactic changed from one of a full-scale invasion of the country and as we saw Russian troops start to pull back from other areas including around the capital and elsewhere in northern Ukraine then it now makes sense to have the man who was overseeing south and southeastern Ukraine in charge of the troops because this is where the majority of the fighting is going to be done. One theory amongst military experts is that uh, with him in charge it should see improved communication. Now that has been a criticism of Russian military tactics that there have been lots of disparate forces and there hasn't been much in the way of joined up thinking and so by having this decorated military commander with previous experience in Syria in charge then he should help improve Russia's performance uh, militarily in Ukraine so we will wait and see if that comes true. Uh, there is also a theory that the Kremlin is very keen to have something positive to say to the Russian people on the 9th of May. Now that's Victory Day in Russia where they celebrate victory in World War II over the Nazis. So there is that political pressure it's argued to achieve something by then but then of course comes the debate about whether that political pressure is going to really get in the way of military operations. Will they need to make military decisions based on needing to achieve something by the 9th of May whereas if it wasn't for that pressure maybe they would do things differently. So it's going to be interesting to see about that. What we have seen is a slow drip feed of troops into south and southeastern Ukraine who have been uh, previously deployed elsewhere in the country. A lot of uh, intelligence, British military intelligence for example, has said it was going to take some time for troops that had previously been deployed elsewhere to re-equip themselves and to prepare to fight again. Of course we've been hearing about heavy Russian losses as well. Exact figures very difficult to come by. The Ukrainians claim to potentially have killed somewhere in the region of 19,000 Russian troops. Of course Russia say that figure is a lot lower and uh, Western uh, intelligence says it could be somewhere around about the, uh, the 10,000 region was uh, one of the latest uh, estimates but to be honest that estimate has been anywhere from seven to fifteen thousand such is the fog of war and the difficulty of knowing exact numbers but all of this is relevant because it has hampered Russia's ability to simply just uh, move into south and southeastern Ukraine and really pick up the fighting there they're having to go elsewhere to redeploy to um, to find new troops to put into these areas but we are expecting to see a build up in the fighting there over the coming days and weeks. What we've also been hearing about are these uh, so-called uh, civilian corridors opening up to allow people caught up in the fighting to escape some of the worst affected areas. As many as 10 humanitarian corridors are due to be opened uh, in the next 24 hours. What we will have to wait and see though is whether both sides honour that agreement. Previous agreements on these humanitarian cor corridors have been uh, slightly hit and miss uh, because sometimes they have simply been ignored by the Russian side and of course we've seen some shocking images especially from a train station uh, where more than 50 civilians were killed as they were looking to get on board a train to leave. 
Uh, I've heard from one reporter in Ukraine as well about just how well the railways are still running in Ukraine and how that is hugely helping evacuation efforts that despite the fact this invasion has been going on for more than six weeks the railways are still working well and it is allowing more people to leave Ukraine so we will have to keep an eye on that to see if this evacuation of civilians can continue as more of them continue to die in this conflict.